Can we make climbing gear stronger? What if we could do a process to this that can make it instead of 24 kilonewtons or 30, make it 30 or 40 kilonewtons? Now, if you weighed 80 to 100 kilograms and you fell past your belayer, assuming they're not standing on the ground, you could generate eight to 12 kilonewtons. So do we need it stronger? I I don't know, it's a fun experiment. I get a lot of interesting messages and Evan hit me up and said, hey, have you ever tried cryogenic freezing climbing gear? I was like, what's that? And instead of work hardening or heating steel up, which would I guess make it brittle, then you take it down to negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which sounds colder, the negative 148 degrees Celsius, but it's the same thing. Now the theory is it lines up the crystalline structure or it makes the molecules straighter or whatever, it makes it stronger. I'm wondering if it makes it more brittle. So <laughs> this might actually make it weaker, but it would be interesting if we could do a treatment on carabiners that would make it stronger. Now, both of these have been taken down to negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And we are going to test five of these each and we're gonna test five not treated carabiners. Perfectly good carabiners, it's actually pretty sad. And for fun, we're going to test three Dyneema slings and three nylon slings that were treated, along with ones that weren't, though I don't know what that's going to do. Now I've been planning this episode for about six months and I did not have a store when I started this, but I do actually have one now and I carry all of these products in it as hopefully making this channel more viable. Let's start with the cryo treated ones first and we're not going to connect a steel carabiner because they might break when you're trying to break a steel carabiner. And I don't necessarily want to use a shackle because I don't want hard stuff going flying. So we're going to use some Dyneema, which is about 60 kilonewtons and about the diameter of a rope. Before I pull, look how nice and shiny this non-treated one is. But on this, you can see some weird finish issues here. And I don't know why that has Sharpie marks. Oh, it's warm. Luckily, it's still locked. There's a spring and it looks like the pin sheared off. I still see the pin inside the hole. 30.34 and that is part of the pin that sheared off. This one broke below its rating. 31.32. So for fun, let's use some Technora soft shackles that I have instead of the Dyneema ones. Holy crap. This thing broke at half of what my Dyneema soft shackles break at. Let's pull on that again, but with Dyneema. That, oh, that's interesting. That is the spring inside of the gate. Now that steel carabiner is rated for 30 kilonewtons and that's like just right there. Let's see if uh, the non-treated ones are any different. Same results, but I don't see any weird finish issues on this one. I think I'm shaking the camera more than the carabiner. These are like, they're not all higher. There was a 33, but don't think this is giving us anything crazy. So I'm not gonna break the other perfectly good three carabiners. Let's see if it did anything for the aluminum. That is not a micro fracture. That is a major fracture. You can see it's blowing the nose off of this thing. And this is the last one. And I found the nose just now. So once that comes off, it just opens up all the way. Same thing, the nose blew off again. They keep breaking in the same spot back here. Same thing, the nose came off, breaks here, it's rated for 22. Same exact thing going on here. So you can see that the standard deviation of the average mean of the statistical significance of the, it's close enough, okay? And, and the new ones, I uh, just, pulled are 22 and 23 kilonewtons. It's, it's not making any difference. Now I'm curious if soft goods taken down to that low of a temperature damages them. I'm pretty sure it doesn't help them. So it's rated for 22. Point of interest is that it's breaking at the first stitch right there. Oh, this was the first one that didn't break in the stitches. Interesting. So that pretty consistently broke above the minimum breaking strength rating, which is good. It didn't damage it. I doubt that it made it stronger, but I don't have any new ones in hand right now. 
But since I actually really like the way they feel, they look, and they're super strong enough, I'm gonna start stocking them in the store. So probably when I put this out tomorrow, I won't have them, but I do have uh, Ethelred, Black Diamond, and Camp Slings that are pretty much identical to this, but I'll carry these two now. Let's see if we get anything weird from the nylon. Whoa, it broke on this side and this side. That's pretty cool. This one just blew the stitching apart and actually did not break the webbing. This one also broke the stitching, not the webbing. So the sling is rated for 22 and we got 26, 24, and 24. So that's pretty good. Now, I wonder if I, you know what? I actually might have some of these in stock. Let's test one that wasn't treated. It actually broke the webbing. To be fair, you can have quite a range when you're brake testing stuff. So it's not that the cryo treatment did anything good or bad, but it is interesting the stitching broke. I wonder if it actually compromised that. These are some untreated Cypher Fireflies and I will get better about coordinating when I put out these videos with what I actually have in the store. Half the stuff I broke today I don't even have yet. I am actually going to stock most of it because it did break pretty good. But as far as the cryo treatment goes, Eh? Maybe we can get some metalologists in the comment section to help educate us on whether or not we can make stuff stronger if we really wanted to for some reason. It is interesting my steel carabiner stopped basically working the one I'm using to brake test the slings. Yeah, it was over halfway of the MBS. So the like permanent deformation is like a problem now for that. Bonus tangent trick. I actually find that chain shackles, not bow shackles, but just the straight kind here actually do really well when you take them up to high force. They don't really deform much unless you get way, way, way high. And this is actually when we test bolts and stuff. So I probably should have used this. Wait a minute. Now that I think about it, I pulled that last steel carabiner to 31. It still worked and then it broke higher than all the other ones, including the untreated ones. But then my other carabiner, anyways. Thanks for watching. Cheers.